Hi everybody and welcome to another session of the international workshop on environment, sustainability and education. Um, I'm Oren Pizmoni Levy, one of your co-hosts, and together with my colleague Daphna Gan, we're very happy to welcome everybody to season four, uh, session five. Uh, we're really excited uh, to see so many people joining us month after month for discussion. And I really like the follow-up email sometimes with ideas for other topics. Uh, this is a great opportunity to invite people to send us your suggestions for topics, speakers, you can nominate yourself. We have um, an empty slot for next year, and we are looking forward to design the workshop uh, for 2024, 2025. Uh, today, we are very happy uh, to feature our colleague, Dr. Jiwan Kim, uh, who is going to talk about interdisciplinary instruction for sustainability, teacher training for climate change education. I'm going to read a short bio and then give the floor to my colleague for a short presentation. After that, we'll have Q&A, small group uh, work, uh, working session, and some more discussion afterwards. So Dr. Jiwan Kim is an associate professor in curriculum and instruction at Monmouth University in New Jersey, where she teaches cultural foundations, global education, and social studies education. One of her major agenda in teaching is how to design interdisciplinary units on sustainability. And this practice has been shared through her college uh, courses, workshops for teachers in New Jersey, and will be published in the forthcoming book, Interdisciplinary Teaching and Teacher Education, Developing Teacher Competencies for Interdisciplinary Instruction. As a former faculty representative to the United Nations, Dr. Kim, co-convened Sustainability in Teaching Research, STAR, International Symposium, and Sustainability Education Week conferences. Earlier today, I learned that both of us did our PhD in Indiana, which is another way that we are connected. So welcome to our uh, international workshop. The floor is yours. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much for a wonderful uh, introduction and then this opportunity. Ooh, I see many. <laughs> is here. Thank you so much for joining our uh, presentation. Uh, yes, I'm Jiwon Kim. Uh, I'm a professor at Mamasi University. Um, I'm going to share my screen to show my presentation. Can everyone see this well? Yes. Thank you. All right. Okay, so uh, the topic that I'm going to share with you today is interdisciplinary instruction for sustainability. Um, and um, especially for teacher training for climate change education. Here's my email address. So after this session, if you have any questions or if you want to reach out to me for any collaboration, please, please reach out to email me. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I have a 20 minutes of bell, right? So I'm gonna try to uh, present all of this in a short time, I'll do my best. First, I'm gonna introduce um, the interdisciplinary instruction for sustainability as in one of the exemplary practice for necessary teacher training. And then especially in light of the 2020 New Jersey student learning standards, highlighting the importance of integrating climate change across all grades levels and all content area, so which will be very interesting. And then I'm gonna draw some insights from my university's um, a very unique program, Interdisciplinary Elementary Education Major, where capstone courses address UN sustainable development goals related to the climate crisis, environment, equity, social justice, poverty, race, and gender. And also, I'm going to share the analysis of the five-year students' data, including their teaching projects and discussion survey and reflections. All right. So then, what is interdisciplinary education? I think many of you already here uh, have some ideas of um, uh, interdisciplinary education. 
But there are several different uh, definitions, but um, the common nature is that definitely it should be based on the disciplines, but more than one discipline is part of its a substantive focus. But um, in terms of education, uh, it must involve an explicit integration for the, of the disciplines so that the learner is solving a problem, addressing an issue, answering a question, explaining a phenomena, or creating a new product. Uh, also, there are some several similar terms uh, that are all most used, uh, like interdisciplinary, multi, and integrated. But in the nature of that, um, the more than including more than one single academic discipline or subject area, there they can be called all interdisciplinary. But however, they differ in uh, specific ways of planning and teaching. So, I think you know that because a multidisciplinary like um, all different subjects in a, um, but different classes, different uh, schedule, usually for secondary different by different teachers for integrated, there's a one major one and then other one is integrated. But the, what we are talking about here today is um, really interdisciplinary in one unit, one lessons. Uh, and then some exemplary approaches to interdisciplinary education are uh, inquiry based, project-based, problem-based, design-based, or thematic approach. So these are all terms that are really confusing because they're really interchangeably used together, but I think it just will help you to really define the, uh, the definition of what we're talking about. So, but why? Why interdisciplinary instructions? Uh, teachers teach not just the subject, but people. Therefore, teachers need to bridge uh, the subject contents with interest, cultures, and issues. Um, and the, the old, uh, that students live with within their homes and community and the world. But because real world problems are not divided as math block or language arts block maybe, right? So interdisciplinary instruction could help students better understand the topics in a more realistic, familiar and complete context and coherent to use various subject um, knowledge and skills wherever they need to solve problems. And many problems, are especially relevant to global cha challenges such as sustainability and climate change. And as we all know, those issues need uh, interdisciplinary solutions that require working together. So uh, in education, using a variety of methods and reforming, reforming the way we teach and assess students also play a crucial role. But reports on interdisciplinary program in schools have been and continue to be limited, very limited, also training pre and in-service teachers to become familiar with this approach is rare as well. Um, so a lot of benefits in terms of the instructions, uh, but I'm not gonna read all of them, but um, just the for key things are definitely students can really uh, develop their critical thinking, problem solving skills and very engaging and just the one quote that as John Dewey said, students want to hear and want to understand only when the subject touched them, right? And enter into their concerns. So I think uh, these all, um, the approach is very helpful for like uh, uh, getting interested in the global issues like climate change, environmental education, uh, and the really engaging and want to do something with that. Uh, and also interestingly, it is reported that students learning in interdisciplinary settings showed higher achievement, improved memory, performed a better on state test as well as they have a greater the social outcome uh, and the empowerment for, for the teachers as for the teachers uh, it allows for more efficient time use of the class time especially with the um, limited instructional hours for social studies and science and differentiation for the diverse learners um, so let's think about the more with the sustainability research shows that math and ela teachers had more difficult more difficulty uh, engaging with relevant reasoning about the climate change issues than uh, science teachers. Uh, there are several factors that may facilitate or inhibit implementation of interdisciplinary education for sustainability, but the teacher's knowledge plays a key role in effective uh, implementation. But many teachers were not educated as a students in interdisciplinary ways and have very little uh, training or non-training in designing interdisciplinary units 
and may not feel prepared to extend beyond their uh, disciplinary expertise. So a lot of research studies has recommend that all this um, like a teacher education should explicitly address interdisciplinary education. So um, this is not just theory, but also it's really happening and implementing in our state, uh, New Jersey state. I don't know, because we didn't have a uh, chance to see where uh, everyone is from or where you work and teach. Uh, but uh, I think some of you might be in New Jersey or New York. So then you know, I uh, heard about um, uh, New Jersey's new standards, the 2021 uh, has a mandate um, for teaching in uh, climate change education across the contents area for all grade levels. Uh, the New Jersey state believes that it is very important so, uh, so that all students will have a basic understanding of the climate system and understand the climate science as a way to inform decision. So in the image, so you will, you see the, the web page under our uh, the Department of Education. So it's a, just a page it has a lot of um, uh, lesson ideas, resources for the climate change education. And I think many of you know the um, subject to climate, the, the resources hub, right? Uh, they have, um, um, in addition to the main page, they have another like a uh, sub hub for the New Jersey so that the lessons are aligned with the New Jersey state standards. I think now they have more other, several other states uh, pages, but the New Jersey was the first one. Um, just to briefly show, just to showcase uh, how the different contents are covering or the mandating the climate change education. Obviously science, it's a lot, right? And then social studies, uh, not about the scientific fact, facts or the, any scientific theory, but um, like evaluate the impact or explain why or evaluate the efforts or invest the global issues, develop the action plan or participate in advocacy project. Those are all social studies for age, climate change education. But the math and English uh, language arts are the difficult one, but still um, states uh, curriculum standards says math also reflect the means in which human analyze critically uh, develop data supported questions through the science and study of accounting measuring and describing the given subject also for ELA uh, is the means in which humans connect through the modes of communication reading writing speaking and listening so informed and reasoned discussion about climate change and other important issues that affect uh, lives daily is an essential part of the participating in public exchange of ideas. So still it's really vague. So they created kind of a symbol for climate change through the standards, like um, palm hands, right? And then the little, the leaf symbol. So notes that opportunity that um, integrates specific examples of a climate change in education. And it is designed to support educators in creating interdisciplinary units. Um, so health and physical education, like the natural gas, health issue, uh, and visual performing arts, all right? And world language, like um, uh, participate in local global communities with people who speak a language other than English to address the social justice issues and other global problems. So, but teachers are ready. Uh, one of the important uh, report in 2022 says that uh, articulates the four key overarching needs to satisfy the standards, professional development or curricular supports, interdisciplinary climate change education and planning and teaching and support from the Board of Education. But most importantly, many uh, New Jersey K-12 educators want to instruct their students about the climate change, but do not feel they have a training or reliable curriculum to, uh, on which to depend. So research, sh research shows that educator report um, makes the level of the comfort for teaching about uh, the climate change, the climate co uh, related content or attitudes about the climate change or no time or don't know how to, especially as we said, like um, math and ELA teachers had more difficulty. So I'm gonna uh, show you that how the interdisciplinary instruction for sustainability 
can be good uh, one of the good approaches to practice for necessary teacher training for the future teachers. All right, so what is the interdisciplinary teacher education that I'm doing now? Uh, it's been five years, so we have um, interdisciplinary studies for elementary educators. It's called ISEE program. Uh, when we developed this program, uh, it was a truly only one truly interdisciplinary major in the States. Uh, and then where uh, the capstone courses teaches uh, how to design interdisciplinary units with addressing UN sustainable development goals related to the climate change and other goals. So here's the overview of the program. As you see in the charts, uh, it's an undergraduate program, just regular same four years program. We do also have a, the typical like a, uh, kind of a dual major, like um, English and elementary education or the history elementary education. We do have that, but also we created this one is one major interdisciplinary. So as you see in the charts, so like a, at least five courses in each contents area equally, like five English or six social studies, science and math. So the students can actually, they actually did better, a significantly higher score in the practice test. But, um, but um, uh, this way, uh, many of the courses were designed and taught by full-time content faculty education and major is joint projects of the School of Education, Humanities, and Social Sciences and Science, and supervised uh, by the cross committee, cross curricular the committee members. Um, the capstone course, this is just before the student teaching. So students are junior or senior students. It's a seminar course on the interdisciplinary method of teaching. So by that, um, they're gonna really learn about the, how to design the interdisciplinary method of teaching. And also by requirement, it is co-taught. So um, I'm teaching actually, because one faculty must represent education while the other is a content specialist. So that, and I work with a um, uh, math professor who is a, uh, not education, but the person is very knowledgeable about the education and curriculum as well. But we work together to teach um, really interdisciplinary, try to bring them more, uh, more than one single area, one perspective, but also we wanted to show the like modeling. But um, I'm gonna show you the, the design more, but uh, we also bring the lots of other guest speakers to bring the multiple perspectives to show the interdisciplinary way. Um, and the course is required to have a theme and the theme we have had is um, social justice and UN sustainable development goals. All right. So the roughly two parts in the course, the first the part, the beginning part is for like um, more knowledge about, it's about knowledge. So with the professor's lecture and discussion and reading about interdisciplinary instruction and sustainability, uh, and also the speakers presenting, representing the different academic disciplines, uh, present ideas on ways to teach their field, um, addressing the areas of a sustainability. So a few of the speakers we have had like, um, are Dr. Soyeon An, I don't know. Uh, she's a um, well-known uh, scholar for the um, uh, Asian American history in social study education. And then Dr. Gustin, and then Beecher for math and for science, for diversity and inclusion, music, arts, but all of the, the scholars are uh, some education background, but not all of them, but all of them uh, share their work and teaching of promoting the social justice and global sustainability issues in their field. So they show like really how they can, students can actually um, see those issues, but all different perspectives. On uh, the part two, now is the time for them to create uh, on the interdisciplinary unit plan. So they have to choose the topic uh, by the time they have a more idea already. Yes, so by listening to and reading the stuff. So they have, um, yes, some and uh, the topic they're interested in to work on. And then curriculum study, the, all the curriculum, the standards. And then they do the literature review to know more about the topic. And then lesson plan overview using the web design. I'm going to show you the examples. And then unit plan and presentation. There is no like a clinical experience component for this course because it's a seminar and the capstone course, uh, but 
many of them actually implemented this lesson in their student teaching or the beyond after the graduation for their own classrooms. Um, I think we can skip this. So the web design, um, this is two examples, but actually, um, yes, the left one is the by uh, one of our guest speakers who is a teacher. Uh, and then she has been teaching interdisciplinary instruction way uh, for many years. So she actually used this kind of a simple but powerful um, template so, so that she can see what other many uh, the disciplines can cover uh, the, her topic. But the right one is called web design. I revised um, um, this one using the understanding by design template, as you probably familiar to this. Um, so it started as the same, like um, the inquiry and essential questions, understanding skills and knowledge, um, the key knowledge. But the difference is this here, not just one or two, uh, the contents based uh, standards, but it's really cross curricular, it's multiple. And then the last one, uh, stage three, plan learning experiences. That time we're gonna, uh, we have a like web design. So what, how does it look like it's here? Some of the examples from my students' web designs is like web, right? It's a very complex web, but all of them have a center, uh, has a theme uh, with a theme. So like air pollution or water sustainability. And then it shows them um, a little different style depending on the student. And then these are not perfect ones. So there's some like uh, not really correctly uh, done, but um, like a basically science and then social studies or English, health and art, math. So how the standards uh, and all the different contents are covered uh, in teaching this topic and also not just one way you see the lines um, not just social studies are connected to the center but also some of the activities are connected to other things because the um, all the learning activities during the plan during the teaching are interdisciplinary inside too so some of them are like reading about the um, um, science topic then it is an interdisciplinary, right? But also like a, making a, some posters, using some artistic skills and they covered by uh, some of the arts uh, standards, then is also interdisciplinary. So it shows a, like a very a multiple, the ways of um, the lines between the, uh, the, the content and the topic and also between the different content areas. This one too, right? A lot of like a technology, and mathematics, and then more example. Mm -hmm. As you see, like a excuse me, um, different styles. So some of them are just handwriting, <laughs> right? So so I think we allow we let them do in own way. So the students uh, chose to just the write by hand so that she could really easily add things and then just change things and then modify. So. I think, uh, yeah, this all worked out very well. All right, actually, we're gonna, for the breakout rooms later, we're gonna use this as examples, right? Okay, so at the end, we saw, um, it's been five years, and then students chose a lot of good uh, topics for their own uh, unit teaching. And we didn't really uh, assign the topics, but they chose based on the reading and then listening to the speakers, and they got to be very interested in some of these topics. 11 students uh, chose the food and resource hunger, access, income, health, uh, UN SDGs goal as one to three, and then 12, gender issue, and then 16, the highest number of students chose um, environmental issues, climate change, climate justice, natural disaster, water sanitation, sustainability, pollution, because uh, the, our universe is uh, um, located by the Georgia shore, the, the ocean, so students and their students are very interested about the ocean, it's really a familiar topic for them. It's water, air, land, so 16 students. And then the uh, diversity, I just grouped them as a, uh, just one category as diversity, but civil rights, racism, race justice, injustice, discrimination, bullying, inclusion. So SDGs 10 and 16. Um, so some of the findings that um, I'm gonna share today is um, first, 
this interdisciplinary program and capstone course were uh, very effective for learning to teach global sustainability. Because interdisciplinary instruction provided students, our teacher candidate students, with openness and confidence in all subjects and skills to design theme-based unit plans. So students said that, oh, it makes sense and works great. Um, in the beginning of the course, because they had actually no idea what what I we meant the interdisciplinary education. Because they've been working and learning the all different uh the contents. So they thought it was a that was the interdisciplinary, but now it's time to really design the interdisciplinary lessons using all the knowledge and skills together. So they had a hard time to uh, understand the concept and then learn the skills in the beginning. But as they were exposed and then practiced together in the, uh, throughout the semester, they got it. They think, oh, it makes sense. It makes sense. It works great. And then students reported at the end at the of the class, they felt more comfortable with the, comp uh, the interdisciplinary teaching method and would be able to do it in their future classrooms. While some of the students were concerned that um, what about the administrators? What if they may not understand and want, uh, don't want the method used? Okay, but otherwise, and they were, they were the student side, uh, they were really uh, interested and comfortable. Uh, what speakers, the instructors introduced in the classroom affected, heavily affected the students' awareness of and interest in social justice and global sustainability issues from the multiple perspectives. So, I think this implies that it is an ideal to bring in uh, sustainability or climate change related content knowledge, as well as to teach how to design interdisciplinary units about them. Also, the conducting a literature review about their topics was very helpful. And students spend time scanning the uh, standards most, uh, both vertically and horizontally, seeing how they are organized and how they are connected. At this point, the students have a much deeper understanding on the topics they chose, having done the literature review, and this allows them to focus their topic. And with the idea of essential questions and better idea of the different discipline standards, the idea of web design is introduced uh, through the read readings and then looking at a variety of examples. So one thing that is consistently mentioned by the students in our evaluation is that uh, students' future plan to use the web design in lesson planning, they state uh, it organizes their lessons, shows clearly uh, the standards they want to teach. And, and a few students actually showed mentioned that uh, uh, they would like an easier way, like a recipe for how to create the social justice or UN sustainable lesson plans. But some look forward to continuing research and building their knowledge about the uh, sustainability topics to bring to their uh, the future lessons. I think it was really great. Okay. Um, one of the examples, actually, so one of the graduates uh, who implemented the interdisciplinary unit they created in my course. So she was willingly, I got the permissions, and then were willingly to share these pictures, uh, water pollution and land pollution, um, the demonstrated with the uh, pet, pesticide, uh, pesticide sites. So there were some like students pictures, but yeah, I could not share it with that, but they were so excited about this and very much engaged in learning about this topic. So um, yeah, to, for the time, uh, this presentation has a highlighted uh, specific elementary uh, teacher education program and the capstone in the major, which student, uh, which teaches the interdisciplinary instruction by interdisciplinary method. Uh, on this information in total shows how a university major designed to give pre-service teacher students uh, deeper knowledge uh, of content, bring high success of a practice exam, but also provides a natural fit for the final capstone courses teaching the interdisciplinary method. Um, and this one, uh, and it is this one really works well with the teaching for the sustainability. It should be emphasized that the share the responsibility of climate change education and the collective commitment to preparing educators, as well as proposing ideas and resources for teacher preparation and effective approaches in K-12 classrooms to inspire meaningful action in future generations. 
So um, we're doing not just um, uh, education in the classroom, but also where uh, the state has um, recently, as one of the initiatives, they created some grant opportunity and uh, we got one of the grants. So um, we're doing like a, some like a collaboration and then offering the workshops and uh, for the local schools and the organizations uh, district. So this the sessions are to train and support educators and district for their interdisciplinary teaching for project for sustainability. All right, thank you. Am I good at timing, <laughs> the time management? Yes. Oh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, yes, perfect timing. Perfect, perfect timing and great uh, food for thought. Uh, uh, so if you have any question from the audience, we have a lot of audience. Um, we, we will be happy to hear and to try and answer. Hi, good morning. Hi. Hi, Kim. Thank you so much. That was such a good presentation. Very informative. My question to you is, um, I was a bit late in joining, but I would really like to know if you have a, or if you used a specific research design for your study. That's okay. it. Thank you. Okay, research time means that like a quality of research or like something like that or yeah yeah did you okay. use a specific yeah okay so at this point um we we just collected the data and then started to analyze the data so definitely we're gonna do like um we're in process of uh, the quality of uh research methods but also like um quantitative because we have some like um actual numbers and data so. So that we can really um, use for as um, the quantitative data, uh, the research methods. So it's kind of mixed. Yes. But um, uh, for this summer, um, we're gonna really work on this, the uh, analyzing data, more about that, and then uh, preparing uh, the research article. So maybe if you're interested, then definitely we're gonna send you the the, the manuscript for you. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Looking forward. Can I have a question? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, Kim. Thanks for the presentation. It was great. Um, a question about um, is that specific age group you guys are targeting on the materials specifically? Because the this course, uh, this is for the, our teacher education program. But you were talking about um, uh, the their students or. What is the, the, what do you, can you, yeah. The material, the I think the material questions. actually, I'm interested, yeah. Mm, I don't know if I understand your question correctly, but the, uh, first this, uh, this is for the teacher education, for the elementary education um, uh, major. So um, we're, we're, oh, okay. we're dealing with the elementary level, but, um, but I think um, the, the sessions, the, that we're going to do uh, for the uh, university, the collaboration with others, the, the sessions we'll offer is for all K grades. So, oh, and also oh. the, if you, yeah, oh. if, when I share the, the, the website for the NJDOA, New Jersey Department of Education, is for all K-12. And the standards are for every grade. So that's the really mm, difficult part and also, also very hopeful. Um, but the, it's from K to 12. And then the state mandates uh, us to teach all grades and all different uh, content areas. And the, the book that uh, that's forthcoming in this year um, is actually showing the different cases, teacher education for the elementary and secondary, and then also the practices in elementary classrooms and secondary schools. So uh, Again, if you're interested in that, I can share more, more than happy to share the information with you. Uh, but are you yeah, working yeah, in sure. any school district or in certain grade levels? 
Uh, my specific products of my company, Pacific Target Age Group, is K twelve. Like in, I think in England actually, I do have some connection in England school. It's like they say, they say can they can use in the age four years old. Oh, four so, years old. Okay. Yeah. So uh -huh. that's why I want to see. Um, it depends. And in Malaysia, mm. I'm talking with people in uh, yes. educators, so they have. I think in Asia, they're a little bit higher, a little bit older to get into the climate. So uh, I think they would more like more like seven, eight years old. So that's why I want to. Um, yeah, I'm interested in continuing talking to you about. And then, yeah, yeah thank you thank very you. much. Sure, thank you. And at the end, I mean, the, um, when we have uh, the breakout rooms, because uh, I have a short list of uh, references, basically it's four and more um, from New Jersey. But the, at the end, the last one is a, a children's book. So probably you might be interested in that book because it's for the younger grace level. Um, I'm not sure about the four because some of the story, the part of the story is kind of sad. <laughs> Ending is sad. <laughs> so maybe you will probably have some trauma about, oh, what about the, <laughs> the poor bear? But, uh, but otherwise, then the, the book is a children's book. So maybe, yeah, you might be interested in that kind of book. So yeah, I share that um, in the oh, link yeah. later. So yeah, it's on the, the climate, uh, subject to climate, the website. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah, because I do actually have a book, you know, for the early age. So I definitely can collaborate it with you. So, and then for we- Sure, yes. Please yeah. reach out to me, please. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Sheila, you wanted to ask, and then uh, Emiliano. Sheila? Um, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> ah, you're good, okay. So Emiliano? Yes, hello. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes, yes. Hi. Okay, thank you for the presentation, Dr. Kim. Amazing work. I, I love what you're doing. Um, you. Question. So the, the schools that your students head off to and teach at, uh, do you have partnerships with these schools? How, how do you reach out and how do you maintain any kind of relationship with them? And do they already have like interdisciplinary teaching happening at their school or what's that? What's that feel like? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Uh, actually, um, until now, I mean, I don't know, not many, even in New Jersey, not many school districts, as far as I know, not many school districts are um, implementing really actively in all grades, you know, the climate change education, especially for an interdisciplinary way. Uh, but one of the, the speakers, as I shared, the speakers, actually, she's been doing because her school districts supported interdisciplinary way. And then she could do any topics for any grace, uh, but especially she was also interested in the sustainability because I work with her. So, but it's just the, some schools at this point. So that's why um, the, I think of the New Jersey, uh, the Department of Education is really like pushing or the lots of uh, initiatives to support and promote that. Um, and uh, one of the initiatives is that the, our university uh, the grants so we're working with the, all the local school districts because um we know that they need they want to know and they want to teach uh instruct the climate change education uh, but they're not they feel like they're not really prepared and not ready to do that uh so they want more the curriculum sources and the resources and how to do it especially non-science back uh, teachers so yeah, but we have a local group and then we work with them. So, yes. Cool. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Where are you? And in, in, are you in the state and what state? Oh, so I, I'm actually abroad. I'm teaching in Shanghai. Uh, I'm at Shanghai American oh, wow. School right now. Wow. And um, I, I know Margaret from Subject to Climate and I've done some work with them in the past. So it's, it's awesome what they're doing, what you're doing. Wow. Yeah. So maybe it's a good time to everyone to write in the chat, where are you talking from, that we will have oh, an yeah, idea. Yeah, that would be nice. Yes. And uh, which country are, are you coming from? And then we could figure out a little bit. And there are two questions in the chat. Uh, maybe you can answer for this question. Do you want mm -hmm. me to read the questions? Or you see them? Yeah, I can see them, yes. First, oh, they're, okay, oh, let me see. Okay, Daniela question. I think that's the first mm -hmm. one. Yeah. 
curious about how easily childhood educators take it, this into practice. Uh, if you have more examples of uh, what teachers have done in their classes, and if you later uh, can share the syllabus for your courses or course structures, thank you. Yes. Um, okay. So first, I can definitely I can yeah share my syllabus for my course with you. Yes, please just email me. Um, for the childhood, early childhood, um, probably you mean that um, the P3, right? Um, I don't have any examples um, now, right now, but definitely I can find some resources for you. Yeah, because it's not my teaching area, but um, I mean, not what I'm doing that right now, but um, I do have some resources for you. So please reach out to me. Yes. Uh -huh. Curious. Yeah, this is very important questions. Yes, that, thank you for the questions. Okay, and then Polly, uh, the, for interdisciplinary approach to work in secondary schools, yes, the whole uh, faculty needs to participate and receive content training. How is this being taken up by schools? Yes, this is also very good questions. Um, I know, because as I briefly mentioned, because my presentation was focusing on just elementary education, probably it's easier to do, right, because the one teachers teach all they, they can teach all subjects and whatever they want, right? Uh, but for the secondary level, because each discipline faculty think, oh, that's not my work or I'm not ready or it's not easy to work together. So it is for many reasons, it's challenging. So yes, the whole faculty needs to participate and receive a content training. I agree, totally agree. So because um, as I said, the part of my, the, the book, talks about the that secondary approach too. Uh, but um, just uh, what I remember from the book is that, um, yes, because especially for social studies and English, so like a co-work with the teamwork with the other teachers like as a team, I think that's very important uh, and the best approaches in possible approaches in secondary schools. Um, yeah, so I think that for that, um, the, um, the school support is very important, right? And a more flexible and supportive approach and understanding that. And I know that some of the schools in New Jersey, uh, Rich Jude, I think that they have already some like, courses, courses really interdisciplinary, but otherwise then the more ideal and practical way is that the team teaching with um, other, uh, the multiple different the school faculties work together and then uh, develop the curriculum for them sustainability together um all right i think uh, anastasia is uh, thank you for joining us again uh, hello thank you hi. for a very nice exciting uh, presentation yeah. i've um, seen your face yeah, for multiple sessions so yeah hi so, uh, <laughs> Uh, the first thing uh, I thought I found the title also quite interesting and intriguing because I like the fact that you have put together the interdisciplinary education for sustainability, a guide for, for teachers to teach climate change. And I'm saying this because uh, while sustainability and climate change education overlap on so many levels in literature, there seems to be some kind of, you know, particular niche research areas that sort of um eventually for some people may may seem that they are sort of compartmentalized so i mean the moment i saw the title as i go like you know this is this is really uh not and i think in an implicit manner the kind of message that it can convey to the you know um to the teachers or uh, other uh people anyway um all all these things that you mentioned there are similar issues on european curricula mm. very much so my question, just to keep it short, has there been any kind of mapping between the sustainable development goals and these new 2020 New Jersey standards? Okay, so I think uh, first, thank you so much for the comments Yeah, and question-ish. Uh, the first one, sustainability, climate change education. Yes, um, I know, because personally, I've been also intrigued, <laughs> intrigued by that because the uh, while I'm working in my university and then in this area, because some people say sustainability is equal environmental or climate change education. Well, no, some other people said sustainability is much bigger 
like uh, our sustainable uh, UN SDGs goals, like um, it covers all different like other areas for sustainable society, right? So, but I found after all the like uh, arguments or the like uh, troubles and then actually working with everyone. So I found that, well, climate change education is not really isolated in like a, something else. It's really like a part of a very complex and then social global issues. And it should be really not the core, I don't want to say core because a lot of other important goals there, but it's very, very important um, uh, part of a sustainability. So probably, yes, that the title from the title and all the presentation could be really like a might be so for some people like a confusing why she put together. Yeah, uh, but um, that was from my understanding. So I'm trying to um using uh the climate change education but in the context of a big um, sustainability and also my students also when they created the, their unit plans um they also found that the sustainability is not just the environmental issue it's just the social justice issue like a class and race because all people are uh, affected by um the climate change the impact and different because of their all the social context and then all the different uh, the reasons, like a uh, context, reasons and factors. So I think, um, yeah, that was from my understanding. And then another question is that um, the 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 New Jersey standards, how they're connected to the UN goals. What, what was that? Is that questions? You're muted. Oh, you... it wouldn't. It wouldn't let me unmute. My question was whether mm -hmm. there has been any by anyone not only necessarily from your project, any kind of um, mapping between these standards and the sustainable development goals. And I'm saying this because I'm reading now a European a, a report from the European Union, and they make a point to highlight that the fact that um, sustainability competencies, where they are talking about competencies, the, the, the fact that they are not clearly mapped or signposted mm -hmm. in the curricula of different countries is a barrier for teachers to think practice deliver you know move forward with that so i was just wondering if there is, if there has been such an exercise between the standards and the uh and the sustainable development goals we'll see yeah thank you for so, so much for the question um I don't know. As far as I know, I don't see like a clearly like a map, clear map on somewhere in the official page somewhere. I don't see that. So yeah, that's my first answer. But probably, hopefully, there's some like um people, uh, the curriculum developer behind have some uh understanding and trying to align them with them um, the UN SDGs. Uh, but um, and also I know that some of scholars and professors and then yeah doing and interesting and then doing interested in and doing the uh implementing the sustainability goals in their school district and the work so i'm one of them but uh, i don't see any clear something like a map on any official yeah the documents or the websites yes thank you great i think we are ready for the breakout rooms if there is no other question or someone want really to ask a question no, so maybe Gion, if you can and explain about the breakout room and what you plan for us, and okay, um, I think we have uh, the Google link, right? Yes, yeah, I will. Uh, uh, yes, here it is. Yes. Okay, so thank you so much. If you go there, there are two prompts questions for your breakout rooms uh first maybe i can okay, maybe share. you can share it yeah, yes. for now. all right yeah. okay sure I, I can do that Ooh. okay yes uh it's on my slide as well can you see them well yes yes okay so yeah there are two flip points so first uh, I shared uh, one of uh, my teacher candidates' unit overview, actually, and including her the web design, so that you can see actually what they did, and then 
uh, how the actual web design looks like. It's one of the examples, not perfect ones. So please understand that. Uh, but I like you as a, a group, like collaborate together to examine and deconstruct the models of an interdisciplinary unit plan. Okay. And the second one, I uh, like you to brainstorm ideas of how you would do uh, interdisciplinary education for sustainability. If you're a classroom teacher or any teacher educator, or if you're an administrator or a policymaker, any other roles, then how do you, how would you support interdisciplinary education for sustainability? Yeah, there, here are some the references, uh, especially for the New Jersey, uh, and then connected to the subject to climate. And then last one is, as I mentioned for the, uh, I don't forget, sorry for the name, but I'm asking about the four-year-old, uh, the materials, the still waiting, the book the materials. Okay. Great, so we will now divide it into two breakout rooms. And we'll take uh, 20 minutes for discussion uh, on these uh, uh, questions. And uh, um, uh, I will bring you all back at uh, after 20 minutes or something like this. Um, and we will do it randomly. So see you in the rooms and then back here. Discussion. Mm -hmm. Who would like to... I was there. There was, there was a lot of interesting things. Uh, oh, so maybe we, room number two want to start? Someone from room number two? Uh, room number two will we, we'll start probably in one minute's time. We are trying to put our presentation so that we can share with the members. So please, a minute will do. We'll be uh, glad if, if, if group one can continue. <laughs> uh, one minute, you know, but uh, we have only nine minutes to the end of the session and I really want to hear, uh, so maybe you can show us whatever you have oh, or, okay. or just, just, uh, just you don't have to present us presentation, just say it, maybe. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Uh, just um, 10 seconds and um, that will be fine with me. So maybe maybe we will start from room number uh, one. Who would like to share with us? Yes, Emiliano. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, lots of good ideas. I'm only gonna kind of piggyback on one idea that I really liked, and, and there are a lot, but the social emotional aspect of teaching this topic, I think is, is something of great importance to be taken into consideration, especially with the younger kids. In my own experience, in the early years that I began, I remember showing some videos about air pollution and some of the kids were like, oh, are we going to die? Are we going to die from this? Like, am I going to die like breathing in this air? And I'm like, well, it doesn't really happen like that quickly, but, um, but it's just, you know, a very complicated topic. And also starting to, uh, starting where the kids are at, looking in their community as a local context, I think is super important. The issues that are around that they see and experience of starting with the student themselves and their holistic approach with their social emotional, with their own experience, um, and then doing it in like bite-sized pieces for them because it's it's a lot it's a big topic climate change and um, yeah every every little bit will add up after a while great thank you uh, are you ready group number two room number yes, two I'm ready now yes good so yeah so basically um, is it possible that I can share my slide yes yeah, I, I think so now and that's fine so on behalf of group number two, uh, this is what we tried to do. Um, um, uh, obviously our course, we decided that is climate change, that's what we are discussing. And within the course, we identified a subject, food as a major subject, um, the food system and what our view. And we are looking at level one or the first grade. Um, so the ages of six years, uh, within, um, and so these are little children. So one, we need to let them to understand what the food system is. For example, where food comes from, the type, nature, um, the nutrients in the soil and those things, all those information need to be um, given by the students. Then climate and culture, we are looking at the weather seasons uh, for cultivation of plants. Then within that 
subject, we'll be looking at food waste, ways to reduce waste and reuse this food. So in knowledge, um, the students or peoples would have knowledge in the topics stated above. Then the skills, they should be able to reduce waste by reducing, by reusing the food. Then they should uh, demonstrate how to preserve food. And these are the active learning that we identified. Feed trip to farms and food markets, then the use of graphics and visuals. So this is all we did with that particular group. Thank you very much. Wow. Uh, do you want, they could be your students and they create a map of uh, interdisciplinary. Uh, wow, yeah, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> Great, thank you, thank you very much. So, do you want, if you want to summarize or to say something for the end of our session? Um, well, I mean, uh, I think I, from also from our group discussion, because there are so many, yeah, the comments that I wrote down actually, yeah, for my uh, in, implementation by the next next year the course teaching. So, but um, some of the important things, actually they're connected to the conclusion probably, that would be nice. Um, Cause them, uh, it is challenging. Uh, yeah, it is challenging because the teachers cannot know everything, right? Cause they, especially for the secondary level, uh, like biology teacher cannot teach it. I mean, everything, know everything. And the English teacher cannot know everything about the climate change, the environmental and then the phenomenal. So, uh, but I think the key point is that um, the collaboration, yeah, collaboration and then um, the district and the teacher schools, but all to support each other and give more time to really uh, work on uh, development the knowledge and then, right, the sense of, uh, but also uh, the teachers can collaborate as a team, right? Because the, the communication, the working together is the, I think the key point for the inter, that actually the part interdisciplinary practice uh, not just the teaching, but also among the other faculty members. So I think um, that's the important part of um, you know, doing this. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for actually, yeah, the, the participating and sharing all your great ideas. I learned a lot so much from you, all of you. Thank you so much. And then uh, if you were interested, as I said, like, um, yeah, I know some of you are very uh, doing the similar work and then uh, interested in collaboration. So please feel free to reach out to me and then definitely I would love to work with you all. So yes, but thank you so much for this opportunity. Steph and I and Oren, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Oren uh, disappeared his computer. <laughs> but uh, uh, thank you everyone for uh, participating today. And someone asked about your book, is it out yet or? Uh... Uh, it is actually printing now this week. Yes, <laughs> start to the putting the production. So thank you so much for asking. <laughs> so maybe you can uh, put the name again of the book in the chat for everyone if they uh, want. Uh, I think it's in the, one of the slides. The title, yeah, yeah. I Let's, think it will yeah. be easy in the in the chat. Then people could. Okay. Uh, All right. See. So thank you everyone and uh, for joining us and thank you for the people that joining again and again. It's a, it's really nice to see uh, familiar faces, and uh, hopefully we will meet again. Um, so bye bye. Yeah, I just put the the title in the chat. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I appreciated you. everything. I think you were muted. No, I took everything off. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kim, how can I get your email address? <laughs> oh, it's J Kim. J Kim at uh, mamas.edu, my university name. So J Kim at mamas.edu. Oh, J Kim. Okay. Is there a list somewhere here? Uh, maybe not. J Kim at Edu. Yes, I put it in my chat. But we cannot oh. see this. So maybe you could do it for everyone. Yeah, I did in the chat. Oh, it's for, not for everyone. Oh, okay. I'm no. sorry. I'm going to change it. So, okay. Jakey, it's my master.
Yes. Or well, maybe the book title is also known. Then. We, we can send it. It's not a problem. Okay. All right. 